All right, this last portion before the fun start begins, this is the uh, the technical important things we need to do before we could actually create the images. And this is for alpha maps, for the retouch and aspect of it. This is creating a couple materials to allow us to turn the headlights on and off, things like that. So the first thing we're gonna do is knock out the quick uh, headlights on and off materials. So what we'll do is we'll go into the headlight, we'll uh, grab this material, so glass frost. So we will name these like so. LED, DRL, headlight. And then we will create a Corona layered material, discard the old one. So this is our headlight material. I'm gonna drag this one, the, the glass frosted into the top base layer, make sure it's an instance. That's it, that's what we want, like so. So now what we're gonna do is create a Corona material, Corona light material. So this is what illuminates the actual headlight. Now what we wanna do is we wanna uncheck occlude other lights, make the directionality about a 0.3 and make this intensity about a 15. Make it a 0.4. I'm gonna unhide the glass. So we kind of see what we're working with and I'll press F10 to open up the render settings and hit a uh, three studio max settings. And this is just gonna turn off that light so we could see exactly what we have available. So, that's that, now what we'll do is change this to zero, change this to zero. So now we're not using this at all. And the reason why for that, we'll, do, we'll name this LED. When I turn the light on, I do not want the glass to be seen in the background. But what I do wanna be able to do is quickly switch from one to the other. So if you just drag this one to the top, this window comes up, all we have to do is click swap. As you can see now, we quickly switched them around so we could turn the light on and off. So we're gonna do 0 0.5, 0 0.45. And what I wanna do is you play with this value so it gives it a more of a realistic detailed light. So as you can see now, it's not completely solid on and that's the trick to making it look realistic. So assign it to that one as well. So there we go. Now what we'll do is we'll drag and drop this one over to the right. Make sure we drag the frost, or I believe that one had actually a clear glass. So we're gonna create a light source for these little guys up here. So we're gonna select that. Yep, so it's glass clear. So we'll make sure the glass clear goes there instance. So LED, we'll name this top. Assign this here. And now we have to adjust the uh, directionality of the light material properties to make sure that it looks good and illuminates visually proper. So we'll go here and change this to 0 0.4, 0 0.3, 0 0.35. I'm gonna emit on both sides. So there we go, something like that. And that is quickly how we're gonna turn our headlights on and off. So let's say you are doing a, a render where you don't want the lights on, just drag and drop these, make sure it's swap, drag and drop, swap, done. Now we're gonna do the same exact thing to the rear end. So hide this, let's see if there's a so there is, perfect, and that's what we want. We want a detail like this that is a light source. So, like this, perfect. And it looks like they're both identically selected. Wonderful. So what we'll do, chances are, hold on, hold Alt, press Q, and then as you can see with this selection, how this is a solid white, it is glass clear. So that's fantastic. So I'm just gonna drag and drop this material over to the right because we are using the glass clear. I'm gonna just drag that one in there as an instance. And anytime you do a duplicate of a material, it breaks that instance link, which is why I'm redragging the uh, the glass clear. So we're gonna do LED, tail light. There we go, we're gonna assign it. We're gonna swap these materials to turn the light on. 
And now we just kind of take a look at what we have to work with. So maybe 0.5. I don't want to emit on the back side. 0.3. And so what we're trying to do is find a value that works well. So I think that's looking pretty good. What I'll do is I'll turn on our environment image just so I can kind of get an idea of what it is that it looks like with natural light. So 55 might be a little too intense. So 10. So that's looking good, maybe 0.4, because I want to get this light to turn on as well. And then if we were to swap them out, we have a beautiful turned off red light. All right, now let's do a quick test on the front light. So we're just going to swap these out. That turns on with daytime lighting. And by that, I mean just our daytime environment light. There we go. Fantastic. All right, so now that we have created that, the last thing to do, and I'm just going to turn these lights off. So swap, swap, and then that one's off. Perfect. And the reason why I did this explanation mark in the beginning of these names, so if you open up the scene material, the things with that are always sitting on top, and that's what you want easier to uh, spot them and select them. The one thing I'm not liking after looking at more and more reference is the way this uh, headlight, the hero light, is um, is chrome. I kind of like that dark hole visual of this light. It matches the car better. So what we'll probably do is select the black, dark, glossy material. Assign that to that. There we go. That makes it look better because the uh, the bright reflector just wasn't wasn't doing it. It's a little more darker in real life. I'm not sure why. That's weird. Hide that. Front light. This is not wanting to select it. That is very, very bizarre. So I'll just quickly hide these elements. Two objects, perfect, make it black. I have no idea why. Let's do this. No, everything's proper. Um, I'll do this. I'll do it back. Back face full. Turn that off. There we go. That allows me to select it. All right. So we have that prepped. So the last thing we'll do is set up our alphas. And this is going to make it very easy when we're retouching. And this is what every photographer wishes we could do when we shoot cars and that's create the masks for everything automatically so the way the cgi system offers to do it is we create masks through these things called render elements so what we want to do i'm going to delete all these you click on this add tab and what we want to do is add a thing it would be corona mask i believe Yep, this is it. So Corona mask. And then what you want to do is change it to RGB mode and just do material, 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 and then do one, two, three. So that's what we have. Then we'll do another one. So again, Corona mask, RGB, four, five, six. And this will all make sense in a second as to why I'm doing this. Corona mask, RGB seven eight nine then we'll do it two more times 10 11 12 and then one last time 13 14 
15. So the reason why we did 0 through 15, if you select your material, let's say the carbon fiber one right here, you have this 0 ID. This is your material ID channel. If you press and hold, there's 15 of them. These numbers that we just changed in the mask represents these numbers here. So for example, on our carbon fiber glossy, we'll change this to one. Now we're gonna do a quick test because maybe Corona fixed this, but in the past they had an issue where it did not respect the main root of a Corona layer material. It only respected the base layer. So I'm just gonna press F9 real quick to start a test render and we will see what happens. If they fixed it, amazing. And if not, unfortunate is what it is. So we'll go see max. So as you can see, it's still black. They have yet to fix something this simple, but no problem. What we have to do is go to our carbon fiber base, change this to one. And so now if we press F9, and we start the uh, the render. So F9 is the shortcut for rendering. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. If we go to CMAT, as you can see, everything that uses that material is now a red channel. So done, that's the first one. So what we'll do is maximize our view. So we have material ID one done. Then we'll do the yellow since that's another dominant one. That's gonna be two. Then let's do our carbon fiber dry. This will be three, three. There we go. So that's one, two, three. Then we'll do our glass clear as a four. Then we'll do our windows as a five. Then we will do our uh, rubbers as a six. And let's see what we have next. Semi gloss as a seven. Then we'll go in here. I'll just do uh, this frosted glass as an eight. Then we'll do the tires as a nine. And what you want to make sure is you get the, the tread and the sidewall as a nine like that and the little hairs that we have because they all share the same material so I'll change those three to nine then we'll change the rim to ten we'll change the uh the lambo gold to eleven remember anytime you have a dual layer material make sure you select both properties eleven change this to twelve and you could do this based on how you want doesn't necessarily have to be the way I'm doing this. It's uh, it's just a matter of creating alphas for yourself. So 13, 14, and then let's see if there's anything else. We did the carbon fiber flat, the black. I guess the last thing you could do is if you want the uh, the brake caliper. So 15. So now with that done if i press f9 to start the render and we take a look at this so here we go one we have red green and blue and this is why it's only one two three it works on three values red green and blue because it's easy to isolate in photoshop next one red green and blue red green and blue red green and blue and then four is red and then green is on the back side and then blue is right there. So that right there is how you to quickly set up alphas for our stuff. We covered the, uh, the headlights on and off. And we are pretty much ready to start actually creating some fun imagery. The other render elements I will do is a um, Corona normals. And that would live under... Do, 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 do. Corona normal shading. I believe that's the one. Let's do a quick test on it to preview it because there's two and one works better than the other. Perfect. And we'll we'll go over how this is used. This is all for retouching. And this is where it makes just CGI very uh, exciting to use. So the one thing what I will do now is add a tint to our windows because our, our interior is not CAD data and it only has so many details available. We'll just add a little bit of a tint to make it more of a, like a mysterious interior. Kind of like that. So you see some shape, you know that there's elements inside, but we don't have to try to make it out. The only thing is we have our engine bay, which does have detail. So I'm just going to copy glass window 
and we're going to name this glass window clear, assign this to that, and just make it very clear so we can see those in. So if you do this like some kind of dramatic overhead shot or something, and you want to see the engine bay details, we can see them. So there's that. So that wraps up our data prep on the exterior and the interior and the behind the scenes of all the alphas. And now the next step will actually start creating some imagery. There we go.